Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Again, this is Teacher Mama. Well, I miss everyone because I've been away for a long time. I was busy putting up my own tutorial and my own preschool and now I'm back. So for today's episode, I will be sharing 5 tips to educators on how to teach children under the autism spectrum. So what is autism? Autism is a lifelong non-progressive disorder that significantly affects verbal and non-verbal communication as well as social interaction. So autism is not a disease, hindi po siya sakit. So as teachers and educators, we do not and we never make the diagnosis. Only the developmental pediatrician or the child psychologist can do that. However, if uh, we see symptoms or signs of autism in the child, it is our sole responsibility to write down what we observe and of course to communicate it to the parents. Like say for example, uh, there's no eye contact. It's our responsibility to tell it to the parents na mami napapansin ko po like uh, Anna doesn't look at me whenever I call her name. Siyempre responsibilidad po natin bilang educators na makipag-communicate sa mga magulang at sabihin po sa kanila yung nararapat tungkol po sa kalagayan ng kanilang anak. Of course, we're not gonna say, uh, Mommy, we notice na meron pong autism yung anak nyo or you have an autistic child. No, we don't say that. But we definitely need to tell them what we observe in the child. And sometimes, well, there was a time when I had a student and um, with years of experience in the field, of course, napansin ko na meron siyang signs and symptoms. Now, since I'm not a doctor, I am a preschool teacher and early childhood educator, what I did was to write down my observation and to tell it to the parent. And after a while, so they observed it also, and after a while, um, I said it is better if they ask the pediatrician on what um, I can do about it as an educator on how to help the child fully and if these are normal for the child. Like, say, for example, hin, uh, walang eye contact, non -verb, still non-verbal at the age of three. So, those are the things na kailangan nating sabihin sa mga magulang. And if necessary, like, if the parent has no, if the parents have no idea, pwede rin naman tayong mag-suggest na they bring the child to the pediatrician and tell the pediatrician the things that the teachers and the family observe dun sa bag. The first thing that I am going to share with the teachers and with the educators is to celebrate small milestone. Yun din po yung unang-una kong natutunan nung first time ko nag-handle ng um, special education. Um, it feels very rewarding and ansarap sa pakiramdam kahit na yung isang bata na tinuturuan mo with um, under the spectrum, masabi lang niya yung isang word or um, ma-recognize lang niya yung isang color or isang shape. Sobrang saya mo na. And these are the things na kailangan um, ina-appreciate and kailangan pinagdidiwang. Like, literally pinagdidiwang. Just celebrate that milestone, even the smallest one. Kasi for them, um, and most especially for the parents, it's, it's a big thing. And... Wala. Talagang uh, I cannot explain yung feeling na meron ng isang teacher pag nakikita niya na naging, nagiging successful yung tinuturoan niya. Most especially if the child has special needs. Tip number three. Make the lesson more interesting for the child. So how will you do that? For example, si student Anna is uh, very much fond of Disney princesses. So maybe um, if you're teaching counting, yung mga objects na papakount mo sa kanya ay mga Disney princesses. Or say for example, if the child is interested in cars and you're teaching colors, maybe you can um, put different colors of cars and then uh, tsaka mo ituro yung color. This is the red car, this is uh, a yellow car, this is the blue car. So ganun. And another way is um, to help them demonstrate what they're good at. So, I, I had a student 
that is that was very good in painting so she likes uh drawing scribbling and painting so whenever i ask her to answer the worksheets syempre ayaw niya so ayaw niya sagutan tatayo siya and she doesn't sometimes she would not even listen so what i did was instead of using crayons or instead of using a uh, pencil so kumuha ko ng paint brush and uh, some paint, and then I ask her instead of uh, circling the correct answer using the crayon, why don't you dab the correct answer using the paint brush and the paint? And wow, it worked really well. So that tapos na yung activity, and the following days, ganon alit yung ginawa ko, and it really worked. And for our last but very important tip, make a schedule. So, if the child cannot read yet, uh, pwede ka gumawa ng mga picture schedule like this one. So, okay. so this one is uh, one of the picture schedules. So, when um, when I point at this or when I show this to the child, I would tell, okay, it's time to sit down and it's time to work. And another picture schedule for eating. Okay, this, this one, what will we do next? We're going to have snacks. So, it really helps a person um, who has autism when everything is predictable to them. Like, kung ano yung susunod na gagawin or kung ano yung susunod na activity. And it really helps them if they are able to an anticipate what will happen next. Like, kahit naman sa normal na tao, like even with a normal person, like when you don't have a schedule, ang hirap mag-transition, lalo-lalo na for... Uh, the children with special needs. So, it's very important for us to keep a schedule. And like what I said, maybe you can prepare a, a picture schedule so it will be easier for the child to understand. Uh, with my experience in teaching special education, hindi ko ma-explain yung reward na nararamdaman ko. Like if I just see my students successful in finishing a worksheet or in understanding a lesson. Iba yung reward and gratification na nararamdaman ko. But at the same time, it's also very exhausting. It can be very exhausting, believe me. Um, and you, you have to have a lot of patience. Talagang pasensya. So I, I had a student before also under special education. So he was very aggressive. I would literally taste blood in my mouth because he likes to hit me in the face. So, talagang dudugo yung bibig ko and I would go home with bruises, pasapasa, and gasgas. And I'm not joking. I'm not kidding you. This this boy is four years old. So, yun. Mahirap din. Mahirap ding magturo ng sped. But what uh, I've mentioned before, very rewarding siya. And uh, the compassion that you're going to feel for the parents, ganun-ganun na lang. And the admiration for the parents for having or for for uh the patients that they have in taking care of their child talagang sasaludo ka sa mga magulang ng mga bata na uh, may special needs so um autism awareness day is um on the 2nd of april every year so i hope na we will all participate and i hope that we will all be informed about what autism is they are not their diagnosis. They may be different in some ways, but they are just like you and me in so many ways. So, pare-pareho lang tayo, pantay-pantay lang tayo. Okay, so they just have different needs, different ways of communication, and different ways of interacting. So, there. So, I hope I was able to impart uh, things with you and to share with you things right now most especially sa mga teachers natin sa mga co-teachers natin who are watching and of course to the parents also okay good night and uh it was nice seeing you again so till the next vlog don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the like button